Welcome to the Newman Church Bible Architecture, and welcome to everyone who is here for the first time. Now, if you're here for the first time, before you leave, turn off the video and move on to something else. I uh, invite you to stay. I invite you to stay. This is something, a different channel. Um, in fact, I'm going to show you some things on the channel. Um, as you can see, there isn't a lot of editing, and let me premise this. I don't know what we're going to be talking about tonight. It is a live service, and uh, let's see, I can show you real quick. You can see we have a live service going on with uh, brothers and sisters right now. And I told them as well, I don't know what we'll be talking about tonight. And often this is when we see the Holy Spirit really moving. There is no editing, and so just continue, stay for a second, and you will see all oh, glory to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth our Lord and Savior. Now, I'm going to show you something here. This is the channel that you've clicked on if you're watching this on YouTube. It's Bible Architecture. Now, when you scroll down to the very beginning of the channel, this is the series I'm pointing out uh, to, which is called Great is the Tribulation. And in particular, the second, uh, see on the, on the third line, it would be the what's called Greatest Tribulation Part 3 is something we're going to be talking about uh, tonight. So, Stay, because we're going to have a very interesting message that has to do with Syria, and it has to do with Damascus, it has to do with the end times, and it has to do with what the Lord is asking us to do um, for his return. Now you say, oh, wait, wait a minute, uh, you're already telling us there's something for us to do, but then you're preaching works. I'm not preaching works. I'm preaching fruits. <laughs> some, some of you may have heard this. I'm going to say that in a simple term. In John 15, the Lord teaches us that there is two categories of people. I invite you to study John 14. I'm paraphrasing it a little bit to make it a little bit more um, uh, easy to remember. But you can go and study John 15. So in John 15, the Lord tells us there's this two, this two categories of people. There's two branches. There's one branch which bears fruit. And that is the branch that the Father will prune and allow to bear more fruit. And there's a second branch which bears no fruits at all and withers. And that branch is cut and tossed into the fire. Now, you can, you can think that this is an allegory and a metaphor and you're saved by the blood of Christ. There's nothing for you to do. And it's true. There's nothing for you to do. But this is what we have learned and understood from the Lord. The first step to salvation is to believe. However, belief is not just knowing that Christ existed, knowing that he is the Son of God, but he's actually the calling out the name of the Lord, right? So when you're calling out the name of the Lord, you're doing something. You're, you're, the word calling, both in Greek and Hebrew, stands in for two as two meanings. One is reading. Believe it or not, the Hebrew calling the name of the Lord means proclaiming. That proclaiming was done historically how? They would, they would roll out a roll or, or a, a, a papyrus and they would read, would read that proclamation, right? That was the calling out. That is why both the Hebrew and Greek uh, word means to read out loud the name of the Lord, which means that you are actually studying the word of God. This is what calling on the name of the Lord actually means. So the first step that is belief, and we all agree with that, praise the Lord for that, means that you believe in the Lord Jesus. Now we say this every time, perhaps you watch another one of our videos, but this is a good, this is a good thing. Stay, actually hit that like button if you're watching this on YouTube. Hit the like button right now because this is the only way we have to share this message with other people. So what comes next? You believe in the Lord Jesus, right? No, if you watch this many videos, now you should tell me what's the next step. Yes, I know what the next step is, Brother Carlo. What is it? Good. John 1.1. 1, 1. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. The Logos. If you watch one of the uh, previous videos or recent videos, you know what the logo says, right? We've seen it in Proverbs 25 too. That's the Dabar. The hidden thing, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. That matter 
is the bar which is in Greek logos. Now, pay attention to that because we just said what? That to call out in the name of the Lord is to proclaim it, right? Read it off a script. Notice that the dabar in Proverbs 25 two, which means the matter, also means the logos, which is the word. So we're going to make sure that we understand this idea. That we have logos going on, which is the Lord Jesus. Why? Because John 1.1 1, 1 tells us in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So we'll believe... We we'll believe the Lord Jesus, praise God for that, which means you believe the Logos, which is what? The Word. But which Word, Brother Carlo? You, you're not going to tell me the Bible. I mean, the Bible has been manufactured, changed by man. No, actually, yes, I'm telling you the Bible. I'm telling you the Bible. The actual Bible that you have in your hands now, yes, the King James Version would be preferred. But honestly, I wasn't saved with the King James Bible. So I believe and know the Lord can save with any Bible, including the Catholic Bible. Yes. Now, if you want to have the correct, complete, accurate version of the Bible, yes, is the King James. So now we understand that the word of God is the Bible. Yes, the actual Bible, not the physical printed version of it, but through the Bible that you read, the word of God speaks to you and to me. So whatever the Bible tells us, it is what the Holy Spirit wants us to know. In fact, the Bible says, if we had written all of the things that Christ had done, no one, no book in the world could contain it. Right or wrong? You're saying right? Good. Which means that only the things we need to know are in the Bible. Is that right? Beautiful. So now we begin to understand this. We believe the Bible to be the Word of God. Because we believe the Bible to be the Word of God, whatever the Bible says, not just the New Testament, but the entire Bible, we believe it. We also believe there is no contradiction in the Bible. So you say, what do you mean? So we're, are we saved by works, by the law, by the New Testament? Is in the New Testament uh, replacing the Old Testament? No. It's not replacing it. It's fulfilling it and the Holy Spirit is given that allows us to understand it. Yes, so we are no longer walking in the flesh, in the letter of the law. We're now walking in the spirit, in the heart of the law. This is the thing that the church today is failing to understand. Because it's thinking that there is a separation between the Old Testament and New Testament and that now, because of grace, there is nothing for us to do, which is true and correct. However, is not properly understood. Let me, let me repeat this because this is very important. There isn't anything for us to do. But yet the Holy Spirit does everything in us. So in the outside or on the outside, what you see are fruits, as per John 15. Those fruits are the manifestation of the Holy Spirit actually operating through you. Now, is a spirit which operates through the flesh. Praise God for that. Did you catch that? This is very important. It's a spirit which operates through the flesh. Praise God for that. In other words, it, it, it abides and lives in you because of your belief and your constant and continuous belief because of that you see exterior evidence of you first of all changing second of all doing things you couldn't do third of all performing miracles and wonders you can definitely do on your own as well as seeing the miracles done around you because of your faith because the holy spirit is operating through you good now that we got here what's the next step the next step is Ephesians 4.24. Okay, let's look at Ephesians 4.24 together. Okay, we're going to look at this in the, in the Bible. Okay, we'll go to Ephesians. Okay, New Testament, Ephesians. 
24. Verse 24. What does it say? It says, And that you put on the new man. The new man. Let's see it here. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Righteousness and true holiness. So these two things we see here, righteousness and true holiness, are part of the new man. Which means when you believe there is a new man that is implanted in you, the old man dies, the new man is born. But this new man is made in righteousness and holiness. And the problem that we have with the church today is that they teach many, not all churches, that you don't need the word of God. You just need to believe, but you don't know what to believe in. So if you go back to my, uh, to this YouTube channel, as I uh, just pointed out to you, you will see, and you can scroll back the various video, but there's one called here, my testimony is user one, the voice. This is how the Lord saved me or call me out of the world by telling me, read my word. Now, when you watch the video, notice, notice this. Look at this. These are the first videos on the channel. Look, I have a leather jacket. Uh, I can still show my, you know, my neck and things like that. And then little by little, over time, over a lot of time, there's a little bit more covering and then a little less vanity and a little less vanity. Little by little by little by little. No more black. No more black jacket. Now we dress a different way, etc., etc., until... Until now. This, this is boasting about this. Is This is just to tell you that the Lord operates in us. This is not my doing. Okay, let me look more holy here. Let, let me look more righteous. Let me start a church. So we can be all more legit. It's not about that. This is what I learned. The world is about the deception. Everything in the world. Now, we studied that yesterday in Matthew 4. When the Lord is tempted, Satan tells him, I will give you all of the kingdom of the world, right? All of them, which means he's in control of them. We studied that yesterday, which means our eyes are opening to the fact that Satan is in control of everything, including the churches. Not all churches, not every pastor, obviously not. But he is in control of all things. And so going by with the default, without the armor of God, we studied that in Ephesians 6, especially yesterday in the Spanish channel, on a Spanish service. Yes, we have a Spanish service as well. That if we're not wearing the full armor of God, in fact, why don't we look at this here as well? Let's go, let's go to Ephesians 6. Here it says, Ephesians 6. Okay, it says Ephesians 6 verse, verse 10. Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All right, it says right here, right? It says, be strong in the Lord. Now, if there was nothing to do, why is the gospel telling us be strong in the Lord? It would say, worry not. There's nothing for you to do. Have a good time. Make a lot of money. Uh, ask God for prosperity, and you're good to go. But it doesn't say that. It says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on, here it goes, put on the whole armor of God. Does it say put on at least some piece of the armor of God? Or does it say the whole armor? It says the whole armor, right? Why? That you, here's the, here's the key word that I want everybody to focus on tonight. What does it say here? That you may be able, may be able. Not that you will absolutely, certainly, with a guarantee. It doesn't say that. It says that you might, may be able to. Because when we continue reading, here's what it says, to stand against the vials of the devil, 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What do we fight against? Not flesh and blood. What do we say about the Holy Spirit operating in us? It's a spirit operating through the flesh. In other words, if you don't have the spirit of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you can't possibly fight principalities in high places. Because you, with your inability in flesh, cannot fight in the spirit. That's why you're taken over without knowing. That's why you're depressed, sad, sick, and all these other things. Now, we've done a, a teaching on sickness, for example, which sometimes it is the will of God for you not to be well. Elijah died of a disease. We understand that. But in very many situations, this is not the case. There are situations where the Lord will allow you to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. No, pro no problem with that. But you will have peace in your heart. You understand that? If there is no peace in your heart, now no, nobody's condemning anyone. Don't turn off the video yet. This is the good part coming. It's not about condemning. It's saying, you're driving a car, right? Okay. You know when the little light goes off that there is no oil? It still gives you another thousand miles, maybe. Maybe even more. But you got to change the oil, right? It's just a warning. You're feeling that feeling of depression or sadness or worry. It's a, it's, a, it's a light going off on your dashboard saying, I need the Lord. I need the Holy Spirit. I need to return to the word of God. The number one answer to all problems is the word of God. Good. Now we begin to see how we're moving here in the spirit saying we're not we're not flesh against flesh, but it's spirit against spirit. Therefore, it says, T Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. That you again says it one more time. It says it again. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. We need to see these things. But it's preached in the church as it's a good thing to put on the armor of God. Not as a necessity and a must, and we need to do it now, because otherwise we're going to be walking in the flesh and going to be beaten down all over from all sides. The church is not teaching this. The church is teaching that all you have to say is, I believe in Christ and he is my Lord and Savior. But the angels also, or the demons also believe and tremble. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with, here are the pieces of the armor. Okay, let's look at them. With first piece, truth. Having on the breastplate of, what is the second piece of the armor? What do we read in Ephesians 4, 24? Righteousness and holiness, right? Here's the second piece, righteousness. But yet we have churches in California where the pastor is a porn star. The pastor saying that it doesn't matter how much you sin because if you stop sinning on one side, you continue sinning on the other side. Yeah, because you cannot stop sinning, but the Holy Spirit in you 100% can. Otherwise, why would the Holy Spirit be in you? Then we're believing a paper gospel, a fantasy a story. The Holy Spirit in you will, no co will not coexist with sin. And bear in mind, 1 John teaches us, there is a sin unto death and a sin not unto death. But the sin not unto death is like, well, let me see what the Catholic version of, you know, venial, I think they call them venial versus whatever the, the rest is. All sin, all unrighteousness is unto death. I don't recommend trying to pick and choose. Oh, you know what? If I just watch this, it's not as bad as killing someone. That's not the point, right? Okay, good. We're looking at the armor, which is made of truth, righteousness, 
And yes, we will talk about Syria. And your feet are shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always, here says, applying the armor with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So we're called to pray in the spirit. Now we see it there. Truth, righteousness, gospel of peace, faith, salvation, the word of God, praying in the spirit. Now we got the fundamentals. Because the whole point is, yes, we are in the end times. In fact, the end times have been confirmed over and over and over. Now, in all honesty, I, I, I forget even the teachings we've done yesterday. It, I, this is how I know it's not my wisdom. I don't remember anything. I don't remember the titles. I don't remember really what we talked about. I don't remember anything. We're going to have to do it one of these days. Let me see if I can do it right now. There we go. These are my notes for three years of studying. I don't remember any of them. I don't remember. This is a good thing. It means it's not my wisdom. If it was me sitting down with the Bible, going through it, you know, taking little notes, trying to figure things out, perhaps I would remember. But we don't remember because it's not our wisdom. But the scripture says, John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and bring things to remembrance according to what we need. So let's rejoice. Because we are in the end times, and we're going to prove it one more time, as we said yesterday, we had an additional confirmation right, which had to do with Psalms 27, 5. Because of that, we have to understand what the gospel is about. This is the primary message. The church is not prepared. The, the, the viewers and the believers are here looking for a date. And that's all okay. But in reality, what is that going to do to you when your life might be called out tomorrow? And here we are standing, preachers and pastors, worried about the things we should be worried about. Instead of speaking the truth, which is walking in righteousness and holiness, which is part of the armor without which we're completely exposed, without which the vials of the enemy come in. And what do you think the vials of the enemy are? Depression, suicide, spirit of suicide, spirit of disease. All of these are spirits. One way or another. But we're caught, when we get, you know, if you're in a battle and you get a vial, which is an arrow penetrating or, you know, cutting you somewhere, you say, okay, just kill me. No, you, you would try to escape. We try to move. You would try to remove it. You would try to, right? And you realize that you had what? A breach in your arm. So when we see these things, it happens to me as well. I need prayer for all kinds of things. Then I go to the Lord, my brothers and sisters, and ask, let's pray. We got to close the armor. We got to seal up the armor. Where is the breach? Where is the breach? Is that in any of these categories? Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, the word of God. Look at the last one is the word of God, right? This is the biggest breach. People go out without a sword. The biggest problem, I always say it. The problem you see in any Christian who is experiencing stress for good reasons is that they're not spending time with the Word of God. When we don't spend time with the Word of God, we don't have the sword to file against, fight against the enemy. Okay, so what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about that we understand now what the Lord is calling us to do. We've done that first which is to put on the armor of God. It's a must. It's not, a, it's not an option. Which in, includes righteousness and the word of God. Those are the easy ones to remember, I would say. Righteousness and the word of God, right? 
gospel of peace, salvation, faith, and truth, in addition. But focus on righteousness. Here, we're going to change colors. Focus on seeing the fruits of righteousness and reading the word of God. Focus on those two things. That means your armor, at least it's got the breastplate and the sword. You can go out in the field with the breastplate and the sword. Now you're going to need the rest. Because of that, we now understand this is what the Lord is asking us to do. So that that way we can move forward into these end times with the proper attire. So we're going to look at this on the whiteboard, as we always do here, or sometimes there's a little bit of a, of a glitch when we turn on the whiteboard, but hang in there. Okay, what are we going to look at? We're going to look at this um, very interesting set of parameters that the Lord has showed us. Okay. We're going to go into Matthew. Okay, we're going to go into Matthew 1, verse 17. And I'll read it to you. And then we're going to come back. We're going to come back to, uh, to things here. So Matthew 1. Okay. Matthew 1, verse 17. Says. Let's look at it here. It says, so all the generations from Abraham to David are 14. Generations. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Okay. What is the verse here? Matthew 1. 17, right? 117. So I'm going to put it here. 117 talks about what? 14, 14, and 14 generations. You can see that? That's a lot of very interesting numbers. We see the 14, and we see the 17. Okay. So now we understand this. The first thing we're going to write down here is the fact that this is Matthew 117. Now, for those who have followed this channel for some time, okay, what does the 117 tell us about? Zero, one, or one, let's put it like that, one, seven, okay, I'll put it here of 2023. And, and yes, I do a lot of errors because this is not my wisdom. So I, I follow along as I can. There's errors here because I'm just a man. 1-7 of 2023, the Israeli protest, right? Then we have a 10-7 of 2023, which is the war, right? The Palestinian war. Then we have the next one. If you watch these videos, which is 1017 of 2024. This is exactly, okay, 1017 is exactly, let's see if we have a little space here to keep going. I put it here, yeah, there. 2520 days, which is 1260 plus 1260 days, okay. Two, what? 9-11 of 2031. So we'll write it here. 9-11-2031. Okay. What's 9-11-2031? If this is the first video we watch, there is a series called The Daniel Hidden Calendar in the live section of the channel. I recommend you go watch. 9-11-2031, we associated with, not that we know, is that we associated with, for the wisdom we've been led to see, the second coming, right? Or, if you wish, the end of the 2,000 years. 
so-called two days, okay? This is very special because notice that, or, or I'm sure perhaps you've, you've listened uh, or you know from this uh, channel, this idea that exactly from 9-11 at 31, going back in time to, ready? Okay, let's do it here. To May 14, this is big stuff, okay? So hang in there. Not 2023. You see what I'm talking about? 1948. Okay. May 14, 1948. We're going to make it bigger letters, which is when Israel becomes a nation, right? See, this is the thing about these lines. Sorry, my architecture thing prevents me from bearing lines that are not straight. My apologies. Here. So, May 14, May 14, 1948, okay, is when Israel becomes a nation, okay? Israel becomes a nation. Beautiful. Very important date. Now, we accounted through, for those of you who know the Daniel or watch the Daniel calendar, I'm going to put it here again, Mark 8, verses 1, 19 and 20, which give us two counts, right? The count of 5,000 bread divided by five, sorry, 5,000 people divided by five breads divided by the 12 baskets, which is 83.33 years, okay? The second one is, we all know, stretch this, we have 4,000 people divided by seven breads divided by seven baskets, which equals 81.63 years. Okay, you've seen this before. But here's the number we're going to focus on. Between 514, 1948, and 911 of 2031, okay, is exactly 83.33 years. Okay, well, that's significant, that's major, and that's very relevant, right? Because I'm going to show you something else. Ready? Okay, if you have a calculator, pause the video, grab your calculator. Now, notice that these are the three dates that we've seen part of this calendar. One is 1-7, okay? The second is, oops, there. The second is 10-7, okay? And the third one is 10-17. Okay, look at these three things. One, seven, another one with a zero, which is another seven, and then another one with a 17. So seven, seven, 17, right? Okay. So Sutina, we might need your help now here to check on the calculator. Because I don't know if I have a calculator on, on my iPad, but let me double check this for you. What do, we, what do we get when we do seven, okay? Seven times, Seven, seven times seven, okay, times 17. What do we get? I'll put it here. Seven times seven times 17. What do we get? What's the answer? What's the result? Where's the calculator? In other words, one seven is the first seven, the 10 seven is the second seven, and the 17 is, this, is the, third seven, this, the third date or 17. What do we get? Seven times seven times 17 is? Is? 833. This could be a complete coincidence. Or not. Or not. Can it be a complete coincidence? Yeah, from the flash perspective, this could be a pure coincidence. But we're beginning to see a series of relationships here. Why? Because what happened on 1017? On 1017 of 2024, Sinwar, which is the lead uh, person of the uh, Hamas coalition, uh, was assassinated or killed. 
Now, we know this is not just a coincidence. We know that marks mm. something. Why? I'm going to show you why. Because as I was showing you earlier here on the channel, and we're going to go in take a look at that. When you go back into the channel, the very beginning of the channel, in fact, we're talking about October of 2022, the Lord asked me to create and post the series, which I show you here. Great is the tribulation part one through four. Now, I'm going to show you that this series was generated through a series of visions and a series of drawings that the Lord has had given me um, in order to generate the series. So you can see here, the first drawing contains these protests. These protests are the protest, and this was a vision given on 10, 10 October 2nd of 2022, came to pass. These are the very protests. You can see the Israeli flag and all. They came to pass on January 7 of 2023. This is the first step. Now, I never had a prophecy. I didn't know what prophecy ultimately meant. So when I saw this, it was a clear sign that this was, there was something major in these drawings, right? Not only that, but the many of these things, all of these things ultimately would come to pass. So what are the other things here? Let's see. Let's see if we can restore the iPad to prop, proper functioning here. Okay, there we go. All right, there. These four visions, the first one I showed you, which is this one. The second and third vision, which are these two, portray, first of all, Arari, which we've seen. Arari leading an army, which we have seen. And the, the, the third vision, which is this one, shows this army, you can see here, connected with the scripture, which is Luke 19, 27. Now, these are scriptures that I had added, personally thinking that were my understanding of these visions. So Luke 19, 27 says, but those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them, bring either and slay before me. Luke 19, 27. Now we have seen, and these are, as you can see the, the outfits of these writers have to do with this writer over here. And you can see that he has a particular denomination, right? So this writer is somewhat connected to this army and this army is somewhat connected to the scripture Luke 19 27 why do I say this because as we were looking at things this morning with some of our brothers and sisters my sister Natalie brought up the Syrian situation let's call it the Syrian situation and in this particular case, one of the things that stood out was that, there it is, here, um, the whole conflict in Syria broke out on 11-27, in other words, on November 27. November 27 is the date in which this whole thing broke out. We were looking at Psalm 27 the day before. So the number 27 is particularly significant. When I was driving yesterday through the, the streets of my town, this is what I saw. There was a van which had this particular plate. One or seven zero two nine one, right? But if you look at a reverse, is one nine two seven. You see that? One nine two seven. Okay. Next to this van, which is like a FedEx van, next to it, there was this car. It, it, literally in front of me, nine one two seven. So one car is one nine two seven. The other van is one nine two seven, just reversed. 
Now, I took notice of that as an interesting coincidence, right? So this morning, we we're talking about the Syrian army, this rebel army walking into Damascus. Thank you, Lord. Walking into Damascus. And all of a sudden, I'm reminded of great is the tribulation, which is the drawings I've just shown you, right? And what is the scripture that I just quoted? You remember? Okay, let's go look at it again. The scripture that we quoted just today, right here. Luke 19, 27. Aren't those the two plates we just saw? One nine two seven. That's it. Something was confirming the fact that there's a relationship between these prophecies, these visions, the army coming in, the scripture that was connected with it, and the Syrian army moving into Damascus. And what is the connection? When we go to our Bible, we're going to go to Isaiah, book of Isaiah, right here, let's see, chapter 17, what verse, what verse, one, right, what's the verse, 17, 17, one, praise God, what does it say, the burden of Damascus, Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city. Wow, praise the Lord. And it shall be a ruinous heap. 17 1. Two confirmations yesterday on Luke, what? 1927. We can think it's all a series of wonderful coincidences. We can think it's all a series of strange lining up of similar numbers. We can think it's nothing to do with the times we're in. We can think that all of this was an interesting way of um, interpreting things to come. But I can tell you something. In 2022, the Lord called me out on August 16 of 21. By 2022, October... I still don't know anything. I still don't know anything to this, to this day of the Bible. For me to come up with an idea about prophecies and armies and all of this stuff and putting scripture to it, I, I had not even completed the reading of the Bible. Perhaps I just completed the reading of the Bible one time. It would be absolutely impossible. But now we're beginning to see these things coming to pass, not because of any merit that I have, but simply because the Lord chooses to do things the way he chooses to do things. What happened on 1017 of 2024 is major. Similar represented something. It's not, it's almost like saying, well, you know, well, Christ died on the cross. So what? One man. Out of, but yeah, but what that ha what that did, as we know, changed history, right? Something happened on that day that we will know later. Now we're beginning to see more confirmations, not only of these prophecies, but ultimately of this timing we're being shown. Not that we know anything. Let me just repeat that. Not that we actually know anything, but we're beginning to see how the door the door is closing and how the Lord is closer. So what is the recommendation here? The recommendation is that we rush to the word of God and we begin to see as we study yesterday in Matthew 4. Let's see that one more time. Matthew 4. Okay, let's look at that again. Okay. Matthew 4. Here it says, verse 8, Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All of these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. 
What does it mean? It simply means that Satan is in control of the whole world. All these things I will give you. Who is Satan to offer God anything? But yet he's offering the Lord, whom of course he knows who he is, any of the things in the world, which means he controls them. So we've seen the struggle, right? We've seen the decision we have to make. We understand the world is not for us. Nothing in the world is for us. We're supposed to put the armor of God. Oh, we will fail. Now we see Matthew 117 saying 14, 14, 14 generations, which is a total of 42, which is 24. Now we see Isaiah 117 talking about Damascus linked to the 2, 7, and 19, which is 1, 9, which is 6, 2, 7, which points to the rapture, added into the prophecies, of which they already come to pass, of the great is the tribulation on 1, 17, or really 1, 7. For me, this is a clear message. And why the Lord will give us time if he so decides, we'll grow this ministry. If he so decides, we'll give people time to repent. If he so decides, and we are blessed for that. Don't you think it will be time not to count on extra time? Don't you think now is the moment to truly surrender to the gospel? Here's where we're going to go. This is where everybody needs to be in complete understanding. Acts 5, thanks to my sister Ellen for bringing this up. Acts 5, okay, verse 32. This is the one verse everybody needs to learn and needs to be preached in the churches. It says this, and we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to who? To them that obey him. The Holy Ghost is not given to everybody. And while it is a wish and a desire for all of us to receive the Holy Ghost. I always preach to myself first. But only those who obey receive the Holy Ghost. Therefore, obeying who? Or what? The Lord Jesus, who is the word of God, as we said at the beginning, the Bible. Because of the times where we're in, we see prophecy unfolding. We see these things coming to pass. The the protest already happened. We've seen these things lining up. Let me show it to you one more time. What we have seen today in this whiteboard. Remember, there's always a little bit of glitch, but don't stress it. Just hang in there. This would be a perfect time to hit the like button while we transition from one screen to the next. There we go. Look at this. 7 times 7 times 17. There it is. Here's your 7. Here's your 7. Here's your 17. There he goes. Okay. Gives us what? 83.3. 83.3 years. 514 of 48 All the way to 9-11 of 31 is 83.33 years. And many other things the Lord had shown us through this and other incredible things. We have seen the 81.63. I've shown it to you already. Now we begin to see the 83.33 years being confirmed. To me, this simply means one thing. Lord, let us be counted worthy when you come. This is my prayer for everyone who is watching this video. If you're still here, help us share this message. We preach the truth of the gospel. We read the gospel for what it is, right? And then ask the Holy Spirit to teach us so that we can have wisdom and understanding, right? Okay, beautiful. Here we see that again in Matthew 13, right? Okay. Verse 23. 
Let's look at this. Matthew 13, verse 33, 23, 13, 23 says, But he that receives the seed into the good ground, right? Is he that hears the word, understands it. This is, this is what we need to underline right now. You have to hear the word, but you also have to understand it. Which also, here's the third piece, bears fruit. Right, Carlo, but you already spoke about this. Yeah, and it never gets old. That's a wonderful thing about the gospel. I was just thinking about it today. Today I was thinking about this. Imagine a pastor who has been doing this for 40 years. He reads from the same book every single Saturday, Sunday, Thursday, every time that he, t he reads from the same book for 30 years. All you need is one book. It never gets old. We can just read one verse for the rest of our lives and he never gets old. Praise the Lord for that. Okay. But here's the point one more time. Those who hear the word, understand it and bear fruit. Those are the ones that have sought the Lord and found the Lord on the narrow path. Because without faith it is impossible to please him. For them who come to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. May the Lord Jesus bless and protect each and every one of you. In Jesus' name, amen.